Why do they think we about to go and sell it? I just got my uterus cut. You think I'm gonna be on the block? <laughs> like just Well now you got a new pocket. <laughs> 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 For hiding it. Hey! Hey! <laughs> the government got to keep their eye on you. You got all them pockets. Ooh! 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 Shit! Well, now <laughs> you got a new pocket. I love, I love that white people think we would go to that great length. <laughs> I'd be like, wait, hold on one second and just go up my pussy and just go and get the other pocket and get it out. Because all of me loves all of you, all your curves and all your edges, <laughs> all your perfect imperfections. Welcome, little mamas and Gentiles alike, to another phenomenal episode of My Mama Told Me. The podcast where we dive deep, deep into the pockets of Black conspiracy theories. And we finally work to prove that the lump of coal traditionally placed in a stocking is not, in fact, from that Eurocentric tradition, but from an African tradition where, mm. Af where Santa Claus was black. And the question was, are you nasty or nice? It was not a good or bad thing. It was simply a sexual oh. thing. And the lump of coal was meant to suggest one of Santa's Big black nuts. I'm David Borey. <laughs> I'm like the Kerman, and hey, I, I look. It it's got a lot of complexity to it. I thought you would like it. I, I'm enjoying it quite a bit. It's, I really it's, was hoping you would enjoy that. The idea that Santa was just trying to get some pussy and really but just really trying more to trying to give some dick i would say okay fair enough he's not I, he's not as much like uh being a desperate man he's trying to share the wealth with the greater community the diaspora if you will the dias is diasporic and and the idea of are you nasty or nice makes sense because it's like i don't know if i have a year where i was nasty i was not that nice and vice versa yeah yeah, yeah i see that for sure Good for you and good for Santa Claus, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got big of a name. <laughs> I can tell our guest already has big feelings yeah, on this conversation. Yeah, let's let them in. <laughs> yeah, she, 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 mouth agape, I would say, is, is the best way. You can talk. It, it, we don't. We, we intro oh, okay. As we, I was trying to be respectful of no, the we, intro. I, I think I told you ahead of time, this is uh, bullshit. Go ahead and jump yeah, in whenever. <laughs> no, I wanted to be professional now. You know, you don't want to come in the intro. Y'all got to do y'all shit up top, you know? I no, figured, I we... Like, okay, they'll call me. <laughs> <laughs> we will call you, but, you know, it don't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, 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 uh, David, you're uh, disgusting. Um, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Little bit. <laughs> he was like, nasty or nice? I was like, oh, the, the children. <laughs> <laughs> what is but, this? This is... This is grown folks Christmas. Yeah, this is. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I love it. This is Friday after next. After yeah, it is in okay, bed. Okay, great. New kids in bed. Yeah, yeah this they, Santa got an extra schmedium Dada on. Absolutely. <laughs> if you guys recall the film. Yes. My favorite absolutely. Christmas movie. No, I play it all the time. It's, it's, it's so, one of my favorite. I it's feel like so people don't good. give it the credit that it deserves for being. Are we talking about Friday after next? Yeah, very yeah. funny movie. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. niggas do. We love it. That's I think true. that black people, we play it all the time. Like, it's like, I, to, for some people, it's a wonderful life. <laughs> it's Friday after next. <laughs> I will say just... uh, it, it was a, a really impressive third film. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah. the it's first hard. one obviously is like amazing. The second one ain't done great, but we can talk whoa, about that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, oh, like Lacey. Oh, oh, the slander. Oh, the slander. Listen, okay. Are you serious? Yeah. I'm dead ass. I think the it's The second one fine. was. It brought so us my good. guess. What are you talking about? <laughs> Absolutely. And Pinky? Pinky I think said, uh, what? <laughs> I think it's got, listen, I think the second one has what a lot of second albums have where it's got like, 
big hits, but I don't think that if if you just watch it top to bottom, you're like, this is killing all the way through. You're okay, wrong. I could, you're I not, could, no, that's okay, not I could see, okay, Dave, I could see his point out of all the three, the second one being the weakest link. It's, it's still good. Let's agree yeah, on that, it's your if third, nothing else. It's your, okay, your third kid didn't go to the NBA. He's still an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> and I like him less. And I like him less. That's my point. And you know what, Langston? And to know that you're a father, this is very this, this is very affirming to hear. <laughs> I like my NBA player sons more. <laughs> is my point. Absolutely. Man, I'm not, I don't I'm, love him less. <laughs> I know that he adds to the greater story, but come on, bro, you ain't you ain't getting me tickets every week. This is yeah. what do you want from me? I'm not going to hold you. That is probably a very <laughs> accurate assessment of what would happen. Yes. No, I love, I think Ice Cube broke stars. So I was very grateful. Like the first one, we were able to get so many like Chris Tucker, Debo, Big Worm, you know, so even many. Even DJ Pooh. Even yeah. DJ Pooh. Yeah. Even Miss Parker. Like Nia so Long, many. y'all. Nia Long. Yeah. It was so many iconic characters. And it was her name, Paula Jai. She was the mama on Pride Family. You know, she was the one yeah. with the braids that came in. So, yeah, it was just, um, and then Pops, you know, Anna Maria Hart. So it was just, he broke stars. And I think each film, obviously I'm biased because I'm from L.A., born and raised. But each film, I think, was an accurate depiction of what it's like growing up here. And I think it's important that niggas who are from here, if you're from that specific area, that's why you should tell it, you know? Mm. Uh, mm. versus somebody outside of the club that, you know, just is kind of like echoing whiteness and black ass stereotypes. I don't ever know that I I thought of it. And this is beautiful to hear. I, I say this not with any uh, judgment. I I never considered that it was meant to be like as much of an homage to L.A. as you're sort of like centering it. Can you think about it is. as an L.A. movie? Or like you just I think it's a hundred percent an LA movie. I just never thought that that was his instinct. That in makes it might not have been. It might not have been because yeah. when you see interviews, like Chris Tucker even said, "This shit ain't gonna fucking go." Dude, this motherfucker, Big Worm has done interviews. Phase on Love. Let me call him his actual name. Phase on Love has done many interviews. No, you can call like, Worm over here. <laughs> I don't know if we had some Phase hey, on heads. Hey. I know we had some Phase on. You know, I don't want to love his work at the track. airport. Love his work at the airport. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think w- w- he's done many interviews when he's just like, yeah, we didn't know what it was going to do. Everybody's just like, yeah, this script, like it's going to come out, like we'll see what happens. So I don't even think Ice Cube was like, oh, this is homage. But I think if you're making something about where you're from, it may not even be on a conscious level, but yeah. you are. It's it Because it was so rooted in L.A. culture, because it was so authentic to our experience, we can't help but to see it as that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I could definitely see other people that are not from there. They're like, oh, I didn't get that perspective, you know. And for me, when I watch Southside, it's like, oh, yeah, this shit is just funny. But niggas from the shot, it's like, oh, no, this is really what it is. Like, we're so grateful we see ourselves, which is why representation is so important. Yeah, it's cool when I think people are able and it is it's one of my bigger frustrations with what the Internet is doing right now, where it takes away some of like the regional nature of culture. You know what I mean? Like it used to be when a Chicago rapper came out, you knew that was a Chicago rapper. And then Atlanta rapper, LA rapper. Yeah, exactly. He was dressed ridiculous. And and he seemed like he was like five years behind everybody else. Uh, (laughs) But but the point is, I, I think there's a now this regional washing. Where like everybody sounds like everybody, and I miss the right. time when like we sort of like had these these subsects of culture that that almost seemed like they never even met each other. You know what I mean? Well, that's why Kendrick had to remind you niggas, <laughs> <laughs> not like us. And even that little snippet broccoli out. before that, it's just like yeah, me. yeah. But that's the thing, Kendrick. There, he was on this song called "Do Your Gutta." Mm -hmm. which you guys probably don't know, but it's a very West Coast song. And this was about 2013. So this was post Overly Dedicated, right? Pre-Good Kid, Mad City. So that's like one of the only times that, and I will say um, the R.I.P. remix that we heard him like 
really be on some super duper L.A. West Coast shit. But he has it in him and we know that. But I think that's why I think there's a lot of discourse about Kendrick doing that because he's just like, yes, Drake, what is your sound? What is your culture? What is that? And I will say, as a Drake fan, the veil was lifted. I had no idea. It didn't even occur to me that this nigga was biting Atlanta style, Memphis style, like Houston, Cadillac music, screw, chop to screw. I, it didn't even dawn on me. Until really? I was like, this nigga I didn't know really- that. This nigga's from Toronto. You're right, because... <laughs> yeah, why he got fun B in all these yeah, videos? Yeah, when Kendrick yeah. says, when Kendrick <laughs> said, keep making me dance and wave my hands and it won't be no threat, it's like, yeah, just do the dance shit. Like, he's like... His, Don't. his first best song was called Houston, Lana, Vegas. That well, was a crazy... Langston, <laughs> I'm not that bright. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, it just, it just missed me. It was like 2010, best I ever had. I Come wasn't on. a uh, I wasn't a Degrassi fan, so I didn't know that nigga was in a wheelchair exactly. and all that. So all all Heartbreak Drake was my first introduction. Like Drake, mm. n- Grammy nominated with no album out. You know, like that's how I met him. And so early twenties, you know, business casual in the club. So I was just like, <laughs> this was. This, and, I, yeah. and I think, if, if I may, I I think we also were in an era where we didn't ask for that kind of accountability from our. No. Our, no. our rappers. It was just like, oh, that's a that shit hit. So he probably was in that strip club in Houston. That <laughs> shit just... also didn't phase in, I feel like, in a major way till later, right? Yeah. Like the Toronto Roadman, all that type shit. He didn't like it. At first, it was just like, I'm so young and successful. It's so hard. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm think- 24. <laughs> it is. I'm going to open mics. Like, yo, I know way like, too many people in here. Like, yeah. right now. <laughs> oh, I'm so successful. It's so hard. <laughs> I got 17 bad bitches in here. Who am I going to choose? But my, mom, but my mom gets sad sometimes. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's really yeah. what he was that's rapping what, about. He was like, that's what yeah. he, he was like, I got all these bad bitches, but I worry about my mama, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and yeah. that was like our intro to him. So with with this whole beef, that's why I think it's bigger than Kendrick and Drake. It's about like, yeah, it's about culture vultures. It's like, nigga, you met your daddy at 35. <laughs> like, he Oof. met his daddy late in the game. Your daddy's from Memphis. You're not. You didn't spend every yeah. summer in Memphis. Like, so it's interesting. And I think... I think because Drake would just never, he just kept going back. He he, he, he probably would have won if he was like, you know what, Kendrick, you're right. He should have went on live and be like, I fucked up. You know, yeah. like, I I actually, you're correct. But he's just like doubling down and you keep putting him cornrows and that little white boy's braids, just messing up his whole scalp, just his poor little temples. He uh, can't now, hold it. And now, so I just. Here, here's what I'll say. And I'm with you on almost all of what you're saying. <laughs> But I, I do respect him braiding Adonis' hair. Okay. I think. Like, go to hell. <laughs> yeah. If you my kid looked like that, he would only You got to give that kid something cool or else. <laughs> <laughs> like or else it. that is a victim yes. you're raising. Because that is an odd looking little boy. And you got to give him a signature in some kind of way. But so, here's the thing, like, <laughs> since you know that Sexy Reds did all the braids, and then Drake came in midpoint and was like, get the shot. He is not parting that hair. He is not look, taking that shiny yeah, jam I mean, but I'm and not that red tail comb. <laughs> I'm not mad that the dad can't braid hair. I, I, that's no, fair. That's no, reasonable. No, no. My that's daughter no, no, leaves no. the house looking gorgeous every day. I don't touch it. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't help at all. So, My mom, so Drake ain't got to braid it. But he do yes. got to do something to save that little odd looking boy. And and I think <laughs> braids is the best alternative. I think he's also yes. got him in basketball camps. I think well, he's on a lot of things. He does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you got every... bu- to build character with that little weird looking. Listen, listen. Soon as a, <laughs> seen a, soon as Adonis gets a certain age, I promise you, if it's not already now, they're going to say, what is it? The braids. Every time he steps on. He's going to have a hard time. That, he's going to have a hard time. I, I think I think and and we should intro you at some point. <laughs> 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 I think the I think the biggest victim of this beef who has gone unrecognized up to this point is Adonis Graham. I don't think that I he do is. feel for that little boy. Yeah. I do feel because he was catching strays when I, people like when Meet the Grams came out. Some people didn't like it, but I'm a big competitor. Like 
Like, Draymond, I have issues with him, but the passion. I just love, he's so yeah. passionate. Yeah, he's you like, love dark skin fucker. basketball. You yeah. don't have to explain it over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just, I just love the passion. So with Meet the Grams, it's like, yes, this is competitive. He's trying to win. But I do think that the baby is, you know, innocent. He didn't ask to be here. And I just think that it's racist. It's weird. It's complicated. It's, it's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like Drake just wants to have it so bad. And it's like, you poor, you have a white son. That little it's boy is nightmare. white. He's and, living a literal nightmare. He wants so boy, desperately to be yeah. seen as like the realest nigga alive. And he ra he's raising a white child. But was yeah. that what was that the space people were holding for Drake? I always no, thought, I, not, never, I not thought he was once. like R&B. That's what I liked about him. But that's you not what like, he I liked never... about himself. And right, that's what right, makes right, it so right. hard. I also think that he's, he reminds me of old niggas that start wearing shoes with charms. Oh, man. You know, like okay. they're just trying to, it's just like, it's just too much. I know you didn't much. say that to me, but it hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just like, it's just too many LV with different colors on the backpack. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. it's just fighting for youth. It's just like, Drake, I think he's knocking on 40 or he is 40. And it's like, nigga, that's not old, but you are not a spring chicken. Like, it's, it's okay. It's too old to dress exactly like Dipset did when you were in high school. Yeah. yeah not, and then, and, and, not in a way that feels wavy. It feels and like, listen, we've all yeah. thought about it. We've. All, I'm 37. I've thought yeah. about, oh, I got some money. Maybe I get the pink. But then you don't because, you know, you have people. <laughs> you don't gotta but do then that. you don't. Yeah, you have people who love you. And you're like, <laughs> you don't got to do that. <laughs> you got to. It doesn't have to be like that. Yeah. Bro, I you think... know what an IRA is. You don't yeah. got to do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Roth IRA. I need to call Jeff after this call. I just signed a, a business tax return this morning. <laughs> like, love yeah. Absolutely. Love no, but yeah, I think that. He's he's living a life that isn't reflective of, you know, his age. I think he's still out here. You know, I got two bad bitches in a club. You know, I mm -hmm. think it's just and you're dressing like Shmino, someone half your age. <laughs> like, you yeah. you know, he did the little. So I just think like it, it might be a, a a reckoning of like, who am I? Just I not to that's... take it there. But it might be like, who am I? What am I now in this thing? I'm too old to be. The young nigga in the, I'm not Lil Yachty, right? But I'm not Jay Z, right? Like, you're not 50s yeah. in a walking club. So it's just kind of like, where do I fall? So it might be a, a reckoning of like identity, of like, who am I trying I to wrestle with? Definitely. That. I think that was always the issue, right? I think that's why, even within his responses, he just tried to like, towards the end, he tried to parrot Kendrick's style, which is ultimately what he does with everything. And that's yeah. why it didn't work. Proving I, the point, right, yeah, Dave? It's just like an proving the crisis. point. And it's just like, but I love just it's he said Kendrick said I like Drake with the melodies. Listen, I, I like he said, he said everything with me is blessed. I still want you to see success. Like Kendrick's like, listen, just keep making me dance, wave my hands, it will be leave me alone. This little yeah. five seven nigga, <laughs> leave him alone. Yeah, no, he should have left him alone. He no. and <laughs> And it's unfortunate he didn't. I really do. Uh, <laughs> I really do think he wakes up every morning with deep, deep regret that he was like, he was wilding. He was being like, where you at? You ain't responded yet. He was coming with a lot of energy. Yes. For... And I and I genuinely believe Kendrick has five more. But Top was like, let him live. You know, like yeah. it's like when you seeing somebody get their ass beat or I don't know where y'all grew up, but I've witnessed I grew up in the hood. So I've seen many a fights and I've seen many a homegirls. And I'm just like, Lisa, that's it. Like, you yeah, have to no, pull her off. I'm like, no, you got it. There's blood everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that's why yes. that's why he's yes, in charge. Dave. <laughs> yes, that's why, Dave, that was perfect <laughs> um yes but i didn't mean to talk about kendrick and drake i'm just the biggest kendrick fan i'm obviously i'm from la so no, you made that I, clear. I didn't mean to get you, it yeah you, you it's very obvious who you chose in this <laughs> we all and we piece. listen we all have we all have friends from los angeles everybody's text <laughs> messages have been blowing up yeah. maybe two months the last month yeah. yeah, I think maybe we can yeah. relax on a few things. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, we're up. My girls from we're LA, up. very excited, Tommy. The I Tom listened to the, the pop out at 6 a.m. I know that's that. not good. That is was, not good. I was there. I was there. And me and DJ Mustard went to high school together. So I had to, like, uh... pull up. Yeah. 
He used crazy. to actually, when they took out all the Fruitopia and Top Ramen and tried to make us be healthy, he was slanging like Gushers and Capri Suns. Like, always been a hustler when he was like That's 14. That's maybe one of the better sentences anybody's ever said on this podcast. You know, my favorite part of the sentence is uh, is the, how you pronounce Gushers. <laughs> oh, Gushers? <laughs> Gushers? <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> That's that is foul. Oh, that's how y'all say it. Gushers. Gushers. Gush, ooh. That's the way the commercial Gushers. said it. That is you made it nasty. <laughs> you treated it like Santa Claus. Nasty girl, nasty. I've been a nasty girl, nasty. I'm Mrs. Claus. How about that? All right. There we go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> Our our guest today claims to be Mrs. Claus. Uh, we, <laughs> we we cannot confirm or deny, but she she's wonderful. You've already heard her voice for probably our entire first break. <laughs> uh, she she's an actress. She's a comedian, an improver, a sketch performer, all the cool shit. A writer. Uh, you you know her from from her her group uh, or her show rather, Ragged Edge R and B comedy show that you can check out. It, she also uh, is responsible for Who Made the Potato Salad, a sketch comedy and community resource hub for Black and Brown people. She is so talented. We're so happy she's here. Give it up for X Mayo. Through the blessings of God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We we talked about this before we were recording, but this is maybe the longest, hardest fought booking we've ever had. This was supposed <laughs> to happen all the way back in January. It did mm-hmm. not. And through a very series, uh, and I would say vast series of mishaps, we have continued yeah. to struggle to book this. But we're so happy that you finally are making it on. Oh, yeah. I I. Wanted to book it. It was always like when, and I was so grateful that you guys were still down. But yeah, I got COVID, you know, I take care of my brother and then I had deadlines and then David got booked and it was like, it was a bunch, but I was like, I want to make this happen. I saw you guys' live show and you guys, you guys came at my girl counts as Vaughn and we'll discuss that. Um, <laughs> I don't know about and, came at. I was on the side of it. I, I think no, I was David, the only person I love that. You. Yeah, that I was, me. I think Zach Fox and I and listen. Yeah, no, Zach. Zach Fox wanted to smash. So yeah, it really, just Langston. And That's I'll say really, this. Yeah. I'll say this. I have no regrets. I still maintain <laughs> exactly what I felt. The fact that you you seem to be coming in with this threatening energy doesn't scare me one fucking bit. I stand behind my shit. <laughs> if you thought for a second you were gonna go off about. Kendrick and gang culture and I was going to back off. No. No. Only one light-skinned man is going to die this year and it ain't going to be me. Let's go. Let's go. You know what, Langston? You are you are a bad You're bitch. A bad dog. <laughs> you are a bad bitch, Langston. I should have known you would have came in with that energy. Absolutely. I also stand behind my statement. Count to spawn any day of the week. Baby. Wow. I know, Dave. A talent, come, an icon. Come on. Where's her I, I, I was so surprised at that. Were you not a Moesha man? Is that what it is? I did like Moesha. Uh, you a Nisi a guy? You a Nisi guy? Uh, mm. Mm, that is a good question. Char Jackson, Char mm-hmm. Jack. I did think Char Jackson was, she was bad. Fine. She was fine. She's beautiful. She's definitely the batter of Moesha's friends. If if we're going down the list, okay. Uh, Apparently, some people aren't. <laughs> David, some, David's face. <laughs> okay. <laughs> some people aren't. Who was Moesha's to enemy? Wasn't it? Uh, wasn't it? Uh, fucking Beyonce's oh, yeah. cousin. No, uh, no, Bianca, you might be thinking of a different one. I think it was Reagan Gomez Preston from Parenthood. Ooh, I she, loved her. She was, she was a baddie too. Loved her. I love, I love, I loved Parenthood. I Parenthood loved the Parenthood too. Good. Parenthood was my shit. That Parenthood. WB block, the I- iconic. <laughs> Steve television. Harvey show. Par- what yeah, else was Jamie Foxx show. Jamie Foxx show. Wayne's Brothers. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. They casted those shows back then with no plans of proving that those people were related. Nope. You know what I mean? They just would, if if you were black, you could be in the family. Ro- it, yeah. You didn't have Robert, to look alike. Robert Townsend had a dark skin, he had a light skin, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure a Puerto Rican. Yeah. Her last name is Gomez. 
<laughs> yeah, no, it's Reagan Gomez Preston. Oh, okay. And she was brown skin. Reagan was a brown skin girl. She was. She was okay. a part of that era of iconic 90s black women that I love. It was like Maya Campbell, Campbell, Reagan Gomez Preston, Char Jackson, Patties. Halle Berry, old Nia Long. Counters Vaughn. You know. <laughs> Countess Vaughn. <laughs> Countess Vaughn. Come on, put an asterisk next to it. Yes, David. Come on, put a little star next to that. Langston, Langston, you're problematic, okay? You know what, Langston, you know what, you're not going to give Countess her flowers, and that's okay. Listen. And that's okay. She was a star. She was a star. Objectively a star. She sung with Leanne Ron. She sung with Usher. Did you see when they were on the couch flirting? Yeah, but you know, come oh, on, he I had to, he had that. to be there, so he was like, "Yeah, I'll, I'll sing with you, baby." Come on, <laughs> he, he wasn't like, he, that, you no, know, he wasn't Lace, like, Lace 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 said, "We got to get in the studio." I hate the way that you walk. I hate the way that you act. <laughs> no, That's what man, he doesn't. He does it to hurt us. Don't he wasn't the like, he was like, yes. Countess, Countess, we got to get this recorded for my next album. He was just like, no, nah, I'm here. You know so, what, yeah, David, I'll sing with you on Langston the couch. Is a, Langston is a troll. Let me stop. <laughs> I forget. You stand-ups, you little trolls. Yes. Uh, uh, troll or not, we're here today <laughs> to discuss. Uh, <laughs> you came to us with a conspiracy theory that that it's heavy. And I don't even know that we're going to have enough time to jump into to very much about it, but I'm excited. That okay, you're I don't remember which one. I sent a few. Oh, this is exciting! <laughs> so you're going to find out as as we find out. I like it. I, I I thought this was a very good one. Yeah, this is a really good one. We we got excited, but you said my mama told me the government is planting fentanyl in the street drugs because they want us to use the dispensaries and pay that high tax. Stay off the damn weed. You're going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, You're it's Jordan in the garden. Nuts. I'm not even trying to acknowledge it. I just got to keep going. <laughs> yes, I... Tell us everything. I, yes, I do. I, that is my conspiracy theory. I think that having family members and friends that are of the... Uh, gang community, we consuming. <laughs> I was going to say entrepreneurial spirit. Entrepreneurial spirit. Thank yeah. you, David. <laughs> Listen, you you gonna be my key witness. <laughs> uh, I, whoa, whoa, whoa! I don't go to court. <laughs> <laughs> not I, no more. Not <laughs> no more. Okay. It's a personal choice. Yeah, I, 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 knowing that, and just being like, hey, things are changing in my weed. Like people. You know, passing out. Things are happening amongst them. Mm. People that are on the ground, it kind of supports this conspiracy theory that I have. That it's just like, I mean, they put crack in the community. in the Like, I'm, so it's just like, it's not really far-fetched <laughs> to yeah. believe that they would be doing that. They also don't give a fuck about us. So us dying is to their benefit so, yeah. yeah, I could just, I, I just, I don't know how it's happening. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know how they're undercover or what's happening. But my conspiracy theory is about that. Because also, too, there are people that have given, like, their testimonies and stuff on Instagram. Like, yo, my Brooklyn Connect, his weed has been like this. Like, what's going on? Have y'all heard anything? So then mm. I started seeing that a few times. And then people are like, okay, well, now I got to go to dispensary because it's clean, right? And then yeah. it's super duper expensive. And then they want you to have like an ID and all this. It's like so many they're different asking for tips things. now. At least here they're asking for <laughs> No, they are. They're asking no, they for are, tips. David. No, yeah, I'm it's not 100%. They are. When you run your card, they're like, oh, it just schedules up to the next dollar, which is like, bro, I used to buy this with change. Yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> like, this is. Yeah, I don't I don't respect y'all different than than regular motherfuckers on the street. Yeah. I mean, yeah. from when I was a kid, we used to be a shout out to JR in middle school, a five dollar blunts. Oh, wow. how affordable. Mm -hmm. And it wow. would already be rolled up, fully assembled. No, it would be like it would be like <laughs> I, was, I was getting excited for you. I was no, like, damn, no, he was doing pre roll like, blunts. It would be like <laughs> one and a half little nut. And it would be like the old one, you had to take the seeds and the stems out. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And then up to dimes. 
and then dubs and then like thirty dollar quarters when we got older and stuff. I smoked bad weed until it got legal though. So I got you. I got you. I was, Wait, where are you from, Dave? I was in Colorado that whole time. Denver, Colorado. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is that where you're from? Mm-hmm. I grew up in Washington State till I was twelve. Oh my God. I never met no black people from Denver. I I could State? tell by the the way you uh asked him that question. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? It, it kind of had a real. <laughs> no, we're here though because there like, was like a octopus whole... have how many hearts? <laughs> 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 no, because there was Bewildered. a thriving jazz music scene in the historic Five Points in Denver. There's there's black people in Denver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, of course. I'm also, just saying. Also, a lot of Mexicans. Oh yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. And I am Mexican, so I would. We are everywhere. One hundred percent. Every we're everything I don't know everywhere what I want. At. I was just trying to give the breakdown of my city. No, Langston yeah, no, is this fucked motherfucker up. whispered, and I know <laughs> we know what he meant. That's why and I said, I okay, let me, let me, let me just set the the atmosphere. Because I get that with niggas all the time. They be saying some wild shit about Mexicans, and I said. And what else? And what? Because I'm Mexican. They were like, oh, nah, X, nah, they Good cool. Good people. Good nah, people. Nah, they hella cool. The, the, the one who cleaned my line, I love him. Some of the funniest kids at school. That's true. Summer school, summer school with the Mexican kids who were in ESL, hilarious. Every one of them. <laughs> Every one of them. Shout out to okay. my man, Rodrigo. <laughs> <laughs> so you're okay. So you're from Denver. It wasn't legal there because I think being from LA, it's always been fire. I guess for people, like I, medical, medical was legal way early. In Denver, right? mm-hmm. no, yeah, no, no, yeah, no. I yeah. mean in in Los Angeles, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I used to work at TSA. So when I was there oh, no. in 2000, oh yeah, and not in fuck around. And I was there from 2008 to 2010. It was legal during that time. So I used to get so mad because y'all civilians thought you were so fucking clever. And well, just, civilians like, in... is a bold statement. Yeah. <laughs> you weren't in the military. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'll be honest. I was, I was Department of Homeland Security. I was be hon- I'll be honest. Like I'm this. not saluting you for your work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think like about it. y'all on Memorial Day. <laughs> y'all, on Veterans Day, I need a dollar. You need to Venmo me. For my work. Excuse me. I know. Do you know, like, do you know what I caught? You have no idea what I caught to keep you two niggas safe. I know. Top flight security of the world, Greg. One of, one of y'all niggas Eat stole me. my pick the last time I flew. I'm not. Was it metal? Was yeah. it metal? Yeah. Exactly. And that's exactly why. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and that's exactly why. <laughs> Absolutely. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and it was people like you that we made this day flight. Because y'all didn't respect us. <laughs> no <Got> respect. <laughs> no respect. If you got to ask like that. <laughs> <laughs> It was wild. It was wild. You niggas would put uh, weed in foil and just be like, stupid. Oh, I, yeah. It's, this is a metal detector. <laughs> or I, or they would put it in foil and then put it through the x-ray. It was like, you think that's not going to show up yeah, immediately? I remember a dude telling me he would tape it to his nuts when he flew. Oh, uh, yeah. We found stuff Jesus. there. We found a yeah. lot of stuff in anuses. My last day, I caught something in a pussy. Damn. Mm-hmm. What, you yeah. get like an eighth up there? Uh, she had it in a, she had like a dime, but she put it in a old school Kodak case with a picture of Steve Harvey, um, Steve Urkel on the front that said, did I do that? That's so she, <laughs> you should have let her keep it just for that's She's good. I like that lady. I wish uh, it was no. Steve, I wish it was Steve Harvey on the front and it said, did yeah. I do that? That'd be, all right. What, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, no, she, go through. Uh, this is weird. You too weird. You, no. Well, I thought I thought uh my I had a terrible manager at the time. So I thought that he was trying to be slick and just being like, okay, you know what? I thought it was like uh he tried he was tried to give me a test on the last day. So this is my last day of working. So I was like, ha ha, very fucking funny. You tried to give me a test on the last day. He was like, No, it's not a test. Like you actually caught something, which I was so pissed because you have to do wow. so much paperwork. And then we had to call Lawa over, like airport police and everything like that. But she was already sus. 
we are trained I, I, heavily. I, I, I bet. Yeah, we're trained heavily in body detection. So I'd know when someone's lying, when someone's fidgeting. Like we When you say trained, trained. heavily. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was it yeah. two videos? <laughs> 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 they made us watch two more videos. Is it a slideshow? Is it you got a text message? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your I boss texts you in the morning, like, check it. Watch people's body language. Yeah. It might be. Absolutely not. That's no, we had six months. We had six months. I would do through training for almost a year. So it's six months of just body detection. So there's body detection people at the airports that look just like me and you that are well i mean and here's another point that i have to the whole tsa of it all not myself people that i have known have maybe accidentally flown with drugs pretty easy yeah it's a it's a it's a it depends because the thing is too is just like what made me so angry with her was like i said it was legal during the time as long as you had your medicinal shit which was so fucking easy to get. Like, you could just walk mm. up to a place and but get a thing. It that was, was the like, original conspiracy theory is that they're going to put you on a list if you get med card. Or that's how it was here, for sure. Oh. That, that was, like, the initial. So when oh. we got medical okay. and, and went, there was a very, like, I would say tumultuous transfer period for weed from going from legally medical to fully legal it was like there were still weed men out here and like dispensaries would get robbed and shit like that in the early days because like mm. people were like we know you got a bunch of weed in this warehouse right. so it was like it was like a very rocky rocky and mm. i remember when that initially happened at least here that was kind of the concern of some more conspiratorial minded people of like you're just gonna sign up for the list to get weed? Like that's crazy. I had never heard yeah. that before, but that makes perfect sense. Like th- it is silly that we would be like, "Well, I'll register, and then it'll be uh, yeah, this, and then this all of otherwise a sudden... illegal drug will will be legal for me." It's right? Like, exactly. I don't think that's it's, it's, it sounds very and it's and because especially in the beginning, everything was like it was all cash, so it it felt like drug. It felt like drugs for a while still. Yeah, and there were still people in books selling weed for a while during the trans when it but when i could also see black through. people just being like i put my name on the list because i want to get weed and then all of a sudden someone's at my door like i yeah. could just totally see being like this is an easy way to get niggas arrested and throw yeah. our asses in jail and they're saying so, yeah. oh you bought too much weed and now right. you're yeah you exceeded the quantity uh that we allow for whatever you, the fuck do you remember the first time you bought it in the store i was i was i thought it was crazy cuz like the old stores used to be like it used to be like it felt like like here it felt like you were going to a trap anyways there would be like a somebody at the door and then you had to like wait in the middle part and show your id and then they're like somebody like the whole process of it felt it felt, used to be a lot more like lock and key yeah, yeah, like yeah. You yeah, would yeah. get into a place and then you would wait and then you would get into another room and then you had to like hold your breath while they right. devacuumed <laughs> the space and then you could go in. And it's like, oh, this is intense. Whereas uh, the I'm, weed man still coming to my house. Right, right. You know what I mean? Or if yeah. I was bold, go to his house and have to listen to whatever the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay, before we go to break, and I feel like we have to be uh, taking a break at this point, but but before we go to break, X, tell me a little bit about how it sounds like you're a believer of this. This is something that you're you're yeah. sort of very much bought into for this conspiracy theory. Yes, I am. Is it one that you you feel like you need to be like selling to the masses or are you like, I believe it, but I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it in my back pocket because I don't want to sound crazy in these streets type. In I don't know. I think I'm betwixt two opinions because for me, it's just like I know someone who has died. Mm -hmm. Right. So it was somebody who my cousin knew and that's all that she did. So it was like, all you do is weed. How do how do how do you die from fentanyl? How does that what how, you know? And so it was trying to be framed as if like, oh, we wasn't enough, so she went to fentanyl and then she did an overdose. So like, it's just stuff that's not clear. And there's many a deaths that have happened within my family and in my community that have gone just under the radar. Nobody, no detectives are on it. Nobody cares. You know, there's clearly foul play with my cousin who was murdered, um, but because she was a prostitute, no one gave a fuck. 
So it's just so many things that I feel like unanswered questions that I have that leads me to believe like, okay, so what the fuck are y'all doing? (laughs) How the hell is this happening? How is everybody who smokes weed all the time? How are they now Mm. passing out? Other issues are happening within their body and it's happening on a black market level. But these are people who need weed. They do have anxiety. They do probably have undiagnosed like mental challenges, you know, and they may have lived a life of where they had to do something like steal because they didn't have shit. So they're scared to get an ID. They're scared to, you know, inherently they don't trust the system or the government. So what are they supposed to do? They get weed from niggas on the block, you know? So Yeah. Hell yeah. That. I, yeah. Even as you're saying it, I feel more convinced than I was uh, <laughs> before we started. <laughs> Corey, where do you fall in this? I believe that this is possible just because I think there's a lot more variables in marijuana now, specifically via vapes, because mm. I've seen people distill their own liquid just like in the house. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you could be really doing anything. My apartment in San Francisco, my, the apartment next door was making butane extracted hash oil and blew up the apartment. Like, so it's like, I, I've seen Whoa. the like, the like, as much as like, you could just put a label on the shit and put it out and people, especially cartridges, that's the lick now because it's so much easier to sell cartridges in the mail, send cartridges in the mail than it is to like actual, you know, organic weed you know what i'm saying so it's like i think it's possible just in that like you don't know what's going in that you don't know yeah you don't know how they're distilling it you don't know how they're making it some people can do it in the house well but you know it's drugs people are lazy people are looking to make more money anything to stretch it further so do i yeah it it seems very easy to mess with the supply lines to get people to buy this super expensive not always great weed. I was just about to say, I don't even smoke. I used to, I had fibroids and endometriosis. So I used to take, I had terrible periods. So I used to take half of an edible. So I knew how much to take because I never even been drunk. I love being sober. I don't like to smoke or drink. So I didn't, I mm. knew how much to take to like, just get my cramps under in like mm-hmm, in order. Mm-hmm. And so even then it was just like, wait, I'm having to eat like 10 milligrams now, like to do that. Like I have to like, what is, what the fuck is going on? I don't even smoke like that. It's usually like, it feels like the first time to me because I only did it once a month for like the first three days of my cycle. So it would always feel like a new high, like the first time. But then it started feeling like I need more. I said, wait, now I know I ain't addicted. You know, I know I ain't got, wait a minute. I know I ain't chasing no eye. What the hell is going on? Yeah. So I was just like, yeah, what what the hell? But yeah, it is not as great, but it's like packaged cute and it has aesthetics and it looks cute and it has these cute little names and all this shit. It's just like, no, I know niggas that just need good old fashioned flour. You know, like just give me some. I've been buying weed for maybe too long. I started buying weed when there was like four kinds of weed. It was like mm. you were going to get swag, you were going to get kind bud, you would maybe get something with the color, maybe if like it had flooded, you know what I mean? And that's what the Mexicans had. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Dave, hey, Dave, I'm Mexican. I'm, Mexican. <laughs> I'm saying that I purchased from them. <laughs> Uh-huh. I appreciate it. Got me through uh-huh. some tough times. But you know what? Will- when Dave says it, he says like when white people talk about black people, he was like, "You're acting like a nigger." <laughs> when they say, and you know, I don't yeah. even like to say that word. You know, you're acting like those black people. Uh-huh. Like, you know, that's when Dave says it. It gets me that energy. But it was like Langston, you are over here acting like those negroes, you're acting like those people. And you know, I don't even like to say that word. Now, that's, listen, that's how- that's what I'm it surprised like. he hasn't said that this episode because he talks like that quite a bit. I mean, cut the tape, see what happens. Uh, <laughs> okay, we we have to take a break. Oh, we yeah, do. But, Sorry, I'm having so much fun. This, yes, I'll no, be quiet. but this is great. We're, this is so fun. We we're we're gonna come back. We're gonna talk more about the possibility of fentanyl being in the weed. Uh, more X mile. More my mama told me. I look good. I smell good. I feel good. And you sing good. And make love good. Oh. We are back. (laughs) That's (laughs) what the fuck? 
fuck is wrong with you, David? You know what, David? You don't have it all, and I never want you to get it all. If you okay. ever get it all, I will stop. I would never be your friend. Yo, ever. put it on my tombstone. That's uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's really the true life. It my true life struggle. Yeah, trying to get it all. I uh, know. I love it. You're perfect. <laughs> We are back. We're talking about marijuana and the possi- we're, we're, we're talking about specifically marijuana being laced with fentanyl, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, more than anything. Else. That's kind of what I figured. I think I think we I, it's fair to say that all all drug all other recreational drugs have been proven to be laced with fentanyl right. uh, in various ways and it's marijuana that's I guess up for question and more specifically who's the source of the lacing? Is it in fact just like People on the street deciding to do it personally, or is it mm-hmm. the government playing their hand inside? I don't know. And here's where I feel old. I don't know about the accessibility of fentanyl to be something that people would easily cut with weed. It seems mm-hmm. like it just seems like it doesn't seem like a correct. No, it seems like there's an amazing race you have to go through to go and get it. Like there's yeah. like. It's definitely steps that you have to get to. It doesn't, and I have a lot of family that's in the medical field and and not street pharmacists uh, as well, but just (laughs) people that are medical assistants, like aunts and stuff. And so the measures that they have to go through, like the level prescription and all of the vetting that has to happen for drugs at that level. Even when I got my fibroids removed. I had to get cut my my in my uterus, um, which I, I won't proceed because these are two men, so I won't talk about my uterus as much. I know about but, uterus. Yeah, you know about I, uterus? I've heard of them. Uterus. I, I ain't got one myself, but <laughs> big fan, big fan. <laughs> <laughs> they work for me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you no have the most beautiful. No uterus never called me. You have the most beautiful baby. <laughs> <lesson>. <laughs> No uterus ever called me? David! No, no, never called me a nigga is what he was going to say. Oh! <laughs> it's the Mount, it's the Muhammad Ali quote uh, placed on the uterus. It was brilliant. It was just a brilliant, very funny joke. Uh, oh, my God, David. I'm trying. I'm trying. Going to the hot place. Okay, yeah. So, so, yeah. So, when I got all that done, I had to get my stomach cut, my uterus cut, all that. So, at the end, you know, they 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 want to send you home and they're like, hey, this is a, a Oxycontin. Like they're, they they are talking to me like I am an addict. Like yeah. the way that they talk to you post-surgery, they said, hey, you got two in here. <laughs> like we're only giving right. you two. Like <laughs> yeah. if you want to cut, like I love, I didn't even get a full prescription. I was like, well, nigga, you told me I'm going to be on bed rest for 30 days. It said after those two, you want Same two more? You call me back. <laughs> but that's that's also a serious medical industry thing. I've never gotten a full prescription of uh, of pain pills for anything. Yeah, they don't. Being they don't do that. Never, 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 never. Wow. No, no, no. They they tell never us got David, a refill. And then I've had white friends who were like, "Yeah, they gave me six refills yeah. for oxycontin." Oh my god. Yeah. Okay, that's, another that's, conspiracy that's real theory. True. Okay, that's real. are they doing that's not a just theory? Just that's, that's how it works. No, for real, David, I feel like they just want us to lick the Oxycontin per day. That's like, don't it. even take it. Yeah. Just lick it and put it down. It'll help. You'll get well, it we, going. This And this isn't research specific to this subject, but we have talked about it in the past that there's like a proven history. Like, literally, gynecology was founded by a mad scientist slaveholder who decided that he was going to experiment experiment on women's pussies via his black Whoa. slaves under the premise that they couldn't feel pain the way that a white woman would be able to feel pain. Major that like, wow. oh, I can do what the fuck I want to them because they they just won't feel it. And so I think that history, whether intentional or Langston, unintentional, I have has my pap forward. smear on the 29th. You can't tell me no shit like this. I'm gonna be at <laughs> my OBGYN. She gonna be knee deep in my pussy, and I'm gonna like, and what are you, what are you looking at? They got yeah. knees in there now. Oh yeah, you gotta get uh, especially oh, because you get on the stirrups, right? Yeah, like, yeah it, and I like, gotta get uh, for any uh, women listening, especially black women. You know, 80 percent of us have fibroids, endometriosis, uterus problems, like. We are not talked, it's not talked about enough how much we need to get a transvaginal ultrasound because the pap smear is just vibes. You know, they be in there, they look around. It's just, <laughs> that shit fucking hurt. You smoking just, down there. <laughs> yeah. They did that, yeah. They got old episodes of Martin on there. It's like, gotta get your groove on. Like, they just fucking chilling. And I'm just like, wait, do you see anything? 
But the yeah. transvaginal ultrasound, they have a camera in that motherfucker so they can, we can uh, go up in that bitch, damn. swirl around because we need to see in there because my biggest fibroid was like a jumbo-sized grapefruit inside of Fuck. the uterus. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. She was a big Whoa. bitch. I have I have four. Shout out to Dr. Chong. She's the yeah. shit. She's an Asian Ooh, woman from real. the Bay, hella tatted. And right before she gave me my uh, anesthesia, I said, hey, if you see anything else in there, you need to take out, take it out. Go and ahead. so it was, uh, it, <laughs> I had I had endometriosis on both sides of my uterus, which is very difficult for them to detect. They said they don't have the technology yet to see it. And that's what was causing me to like, I had to change my pad every two hours. Like I was bleeding Shit. so wow. bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would be at the Daily Show, like in the fetal position and my, like my writing partner or who I'd be working on a bit with, they know during my cycle, it's so bad. And shout out to Christiana because she was the only black woman there. She was like, actually, you need to get a transvaginal ultrasound. And I was like, what is that? Like, I was down there with the vibes, you know, just past the mirror. They put yeah. a little turkey baster down there, fill around. They were like, smells nice. You're fine. Nothing's itching. Okay, good. Go. <laughs> I thought the pap smear was the deepest. I didn't even know they yeah, were. I thought that was diving. as far as I could go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need to know, Lacey, because you have the beautiful, you have a beautiful little princess, but I'm sure your wife yeah. is well equipped and will make yeah. sure, but yeah, it's a you should know so. too. Yeah. <laughs> Lacey, yeah, she's <laughs> no, got it. <laughs> and for your son, you just got to be like, is it crooked? Some of them like that. <laughs> <laughs> David, Congratulations to you, my friend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 David is going to hell. <laughs> I love it. Is it crooked? Some people like that. I hate uh, you both. We we did a little bit of research on the conspiracy, and one of the things that it reminded me of is specifically sort of the criminalization, the original criminalization of marijuana in this country, right? That marijuana at one point was legal in America. It was actually a pharmaceutical drug at one point where people were largely prescribing it for pain and uh, and anxiety and shit like that back in the early 1900s, 1800s and shit. And then it isn't until it starts to be associated with specifically Mexican people and Mexican immigrants that it starts to get this nasty little stink on it where oh, it becomes wow. a political tool for first it's it's a political tool because of a d different race shit i think it was indian hashish and then it becomes a political race tool for for mexicans and that's when it starts to become treated like a street drug and this dangerous like mm. poison rather than like just a medicinal thing that could or could not be overused mota Okay. Can you, take, can you take David's face off? Can you take David? Can you, can you, can you remove David? Can you remove David from the podcast, please? Come on, man. Move David from the Come podcast, on, please. Man. Move David he, from the podcast, please. He could have offered anything, man. and that's what he chose. <laughs> it was a wide open space. The field, this nobody. Nigga, this nigga sound like he said Muay Thai. That's what the fuck he sound like he said. David, he I hate done you so much with his time. <laughs> No, we don't want to hear you say that no more. Okay? We don't want to hear you say muta no more. Please. I even hate when you say the word Mexican. That's just me, I guess. No shit, just cringeworthy. It ain't even got to be deep, I guess. Lord David. I, I, it's true. I'm truly trying to offer... <laughs> An no. olive branch between cultures. <laughs> <laughs> the other, the other thing worth. <laughs> David, and I do think no. this, I think this will heal the communities. I think no, that'll they, do it. No, y'all need to understand because obviously my family, we're all there's. My mom is Mexican. All her sisters and herself have black husbands, black fathers of their children. Mm. Same with my uncles. So we're all mixed. There's a few that are just Mexican cholo down, right? And then yeah. We're mixed. So whenever <laughs> there is black and Mexican one who has passed away, the people that are just black that are not mixed feel the need to go up there because there's Mexicans in the crowd to try to speak Spanish <laughs> at the funeral. So, David, oh. I'm laughing because you remind me of my cousin, Emetrius. We call him Meat. <laughs> Probably a good and, guy. And Meat went up there and he was just like, hola, como estas? And yo soy 
Betty Sad. <laughs> what is the like Mexican boy? Me. Just, Yo soy, and, and my, Yo soy and muy mal. <laughs> <laughs> I just been with the sabido <laughs> gigante boy. Yes. It's muy mal. Muy mal. Muy mal. Yes. <laughs> Today sabido is I uh, see. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> but David, David, here's the gotcha. The Mexicans know English and they be like, yo, me, just keep it moving. Like, it's just like, yeah, we know yeah. English. Like, we're good. Like, I You're feel being like we've gotten upside down in the narrative on old David today. I love Mexicans. I don't know where this is coming from. <laughs> no, no. No, Dave, we know you love Mex you love the way we make you laugh. Shout out to mm. Ricardo. Don't do that to me. <laughs> <Don't do that. laughs> you love you love us. Oh my God. Summer school with the ESL niggas. Niggas up. Love it. Great and time. Then Great Isabella, time she it. come through. Her mama makes the tamales for Christmas. I've been to oh, multiple, wow. I've been mul to multiple quinceañeras, and I have friends. You could look at, I'll show you their names. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show it because I can't pronounce it too good. Everyone <laughs> the to Z. Z's <laughs> all around. Yes. Oh, David, you would have loved my quince. My chambalan, he was uh, a dark-skinned blood nigga named Todd Eyes, but he had to leave because he there's a lot of shit going on. <laughs> but the second best sentence you said this whole <laughs> really colorful word. I love it. <laughs> but no, you would have loved my quinceanera. It was lit. It was so lit. It's a fun it was... party. It's genuinely a really fun party. But because there's blacks in my family too, it's just like, yeah, no, we listening to the OJs. It's the whispers. It's the best mm. Mexican food you ever had in your life. Like, it's very much so that. Like, That's there's, fire. it was, you would have like had that. a fucking ball. It would have been great. I mean, I like, the, I like, the any, I'm a big party guy. The OJs and great Mexican food. That's a, come on, Langston. Come that's on. That's a crazy combination. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that I also sort of wanted to look up was was where fentanyl specifically is coming from, right? If we're talking about it potentially being in the weed and you guys were asking a little bit about sort of like its accessibility. And as it turns out, fentanyl smuggle is smuggled from U.S. citizens by U.S. citizens most. Like it Whoa. is not the, like the setup to me already. It's yeah. not this this foreign sort of like asylum seekers and fucking, you know, immigrants crossing the border that are bringing in the fentanyl more. It is actually, in fact, U.S. citizens. So it's are, made here. Uh, it seems as if my understanding is that they are smuggling it over borders that they are like traveling. Mm. And it sounds like specifically China might be one of the places where uh, a lot of fentanyl is being made and they are smuggling it over the borders. And then and I'm not doing this on purpose. This is truly a question to, I'm asking because I would like to know, is it yeah. one of those things that you can buy over the counter in Mexico? Because, you know, their pharmacies are like, yeah, you can it's just, not the you, same vibe. Yeah, you can, you can just yeah, go I in wonder. and they, and you I, can I, ask them what you're asking for, what it's called in America, and they will uh -huh. give you... The equivalent, you know, yeah, because yeah, so many so people bad. are going over there to get even just dental work, David, because mm -hmm. dental work is so expensive. Like, people are going over there just to get even just, like, minor surgeries, not even trying to, like, get drugs. So I wonder what's the equivalent over there. And then, depending on these different places, like, I don't know about you guys, but I'm obsessed with docs. I love scammer docs. I love sports docs. Like, I just love documentaries. And there was this one woman that was in New Orleans, this black woman that was bringing in so much Oxycontin and a lot of people ended up dying because she would just come in and they would just be like, this is what I want. She would just write this prescription. It's crazy what you can get done just based on the letterhead of a paper. <laughs> like, yeah. just her, her letterhead said such and such like medical pharmacy. So they got to take it and then got all the Oxycontin. So I wonder I, I presume, I don't think that that wouldn't be happening in other countries, even specifically in Mexico, because that was one of the ports like that we had to watch even at TSA was Miami and Mexico. A lot of times people got additional screening because so much drug trade happens over there. And I think what what this article sort of leads me to think about is the way that 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 language is sort of manipulated a little bit, right? That mm -hmm. like because of its accessibility in foreign in these foreign places, we can criminalize large yeah. swaths of people as mm -hmm. the target, meanwhile allowing the actual people transporting the thing a free reign to kind of do what they want. And so when we talk about like, and it reminds me a little of Snowfall, right? Like when we talk about the government placing this shit 
in our drugs, it's not necessarily because it's just like a mean scientist being like, I want to see what this does to these monkeys kind of thing. It's more like, you know, it pro- the profits for us are clear. The lines of how we can make money off this shit are clear. We can criminalize one group, which is political and, and helps to advance our chess pieces. And then we can put the the drugs in places that then allow us to to gain some money on the other side of it. It's it's just straight math almost in an interesting way. The only pushback I have on that is marijuana money is not accepted federal federally. So I don't know how they cash out on that. Well, like the issue with siphoning people to dispensaries and whatnot as still like private owners. And I mm-hmm. think what, what it got me thinking about is sort of the long game inside of changing a drug's image, right? That like in a lot of ways we've seen it through time that you can't just one day decide that this drug is safe. And so it takes a little bit of like, all right, yeah, we'll make it state to state that they can sell this shit. And then at some point it will be federal and the money will be will be coming in. I think there's an argument to be made that this is just a long game with the drugs more than like quick payout type vibes. So you're saying, Langston, right now, if it's true that they are planting in and the weed is just like planting the seeds for their long-term trajectory of getting money off of niggas. Yeah, I think it's it's we have to make this thing feel unsafe and it takes a while to convince people things are unsafe, i.e. let them die until they learn their lesson. Which is why I maintain it should have stayed illegal. We had a good <laughs> No, Dave, I'm with you. I'm with you when you write, friend. I'm with you when you write. Yeah. I'm with you when you write. Because seriously, like, there was no... And maybe, you know what? I think that that's a very coastal thing of me. So I don't want to, you know, alienate people in other parts of the world because I do understand how it's still very much so criminalized in other areas of America. And definitely a lot of Black people, you know, need it and use it. And I've seen many of the health benefits that happen for specific people. But I feel like... Just because being in L.A. and experiencing it and people had such good access to it and good access to fire weed, like my uncles, everybody I know has been smoking it for forever. So I could see that like coastally, it's like, damn, it should have stayed illegal. But as far as the benefits from middle America and right. other like underrepresented cities, like black people there that desperately need it. I'm thinking about like Detroit, you know, Texas, New Orleans. It was like, a- it was a treasure hunt where I was from. Uh, Man, yeah. see, and that's terrible. And even yeah. like, yeah, New Orleans. Have you ever bought weed in New Orleans? It's terrible. It's oh, no. the worst experience. And I this is probably three, four times now. But also the corporate. David, you ain't like, learned your lesson. <laughs> <laughs> You're He's not like, down there. And you don't want to smoke. Everything about that city makes me want to. I'm down there. Hey. I mean, beignets. I got so much seafood. I just, <laughs> why not just hit a split on the end of the night? Baby, it's like a it's combat. It's like you're walking around. And you know why? <laughs> you know why the weed is bad? Why? Because they they lace their weed with alligator. Okay, Langston, David, can you cut off his camera? <laughs> David, 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 can you cut off his camera? Now who sent you, nigga? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, David. <laughs> That's a nice okay. callback. Okay, well, David, nice you call was gonna... <laughs> okay, wait, David, separate, David, separate thought, but still on the thing of weed. How how do people make bad weed? It, aren't we all just grow? Because I don't know. Don't as you just grow as, it from a plant and then it'll all be good? Like, how does it make it? How is it bad? As far as what I know, it's that it's rushed in the process. Like, it's cu- it's it's not dried out long enough and then it's cured faster. And mm. it's like it's like a, it's like a speed to production thing. OK, mm. is is and it's like I think it's like it's also outdoor versus indoor. I feel like a lot of times outdoor is kind of grown in bulk and kind of not regulated as much. I will also say that keeping a plant alive is harder for some of us than than we like to. Acknowledge. Shout out to my money tree, baby. I know yeah. I have such great plants. You can't see it where the shot is, but I have so many plants. And I keep them well. I got one, but I keep it clean. Yeah, I had, I thought of <laughs> that bitch is never dirty. Yeah, it's never dirty. 
Okay. Oh, my baby's dusty as hell. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> they struggling. Mine's they be so curled pretty. up, cold. <laughs> I mean, I thought about uh, selling weed because I don't smoke it. So I was like, yeah, number one, don't get high if your own supply. I thought I would yeah. be great at it. But, you know, I, w- I want to be an idiot and produce and write and act and be in this very uncertain fucking industry. I mean, you like, could be a like legend in two games. Yeah. I know, but David, it's so it's so hard. Like, just shut like, up. <laughs> <laughs> it's time consuming, and if you're gonna it do it is. at your house, I don't know if you've ever been to a grow house, but that smell takes over the whole. It, oh, it, it, it's, it's like, not just a. Uh... It's not like something you could do cute in one little room. I, I, Stella, be quiet. I mean, you but, got a dog? I, my girl's got a dog. She, oh, she just God. got a haircut. <laughs> She's just got a haircut, so she's... So she's feeling... She said, get it sexy. Get it sexy. She's trying to to show off. Yeah, she she looking all skinny now. (laughs) Hey, hey, look. (laughs) Hey, look at at me. Hey. (laughs) I look good, right? (laughs) I love it. Uh, We should take one more break. We need to take okay. one more break. Uh, okay. And, and when we come back, we'll wrap up this conversation. More X Mile, more My Mama Told Me. Would you say that you're racist? Not at all. No. Yeah. Look at my dog. He's as black as can be. Shout out to Stella the dog. She is black as can be. <laughs> We're back talking about marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. fentanyl. Mm-hmm. The thing that that sort of I I guess rings the most true for me is this relationship to street drugs in general at this point, right? That like fentanyl, I think the the what I read said that like deaths related to fentanyl nearly doubled from 2019 to 2021. Doubled in in fucking like frequency of this happening. I know people who have overdosed on fentanyl. I think we all have Mm -hmm. a relationship to someone who's overdosed on fentanyl. It is terrifying that uh, the, the ways I know that people are dying from this shit. And so the idea that the government... Because fentanyl is a pain drug, right? Like at at its core, its whole point is to be able to like be pain relief. It's meant to work quicker than every other drug and more effectively if managed properly. But the idea that the government would watch this kill this many people and not start to figure out an alternative that completely eliminates fentanyl means to me that there's a profit to be made that they can't cut out. Like, you know what I mean? Like, at right. the end of the day, we need this shit too yeah. bad to be able to to just say no to it. Also, who's dying, right? Like, mm-hmm. it doubled the number and, and, like, who's, you know, passing away? Because I think the OxyContin thing, that uh, documentary I was telling you about, the woman in New Orleans, the reason she got caught is because there was a white guy whose child passed. I don't know if it was a boy or a girl. And he, it's, it's the, P, the documentary is through his POV. It's him, like telling his story, talking about this woman and like making her serve time. And she ends up showing up in the dock. She ended up serving time. And she's like a really, really, really old black lady. And it sucks because she can't really take full accountability because her brain isn't there. But you don't know how much is her bullshitting us versus her being like, oh, my dementia's coming. And, you know, I don't remember, you know, like, it's yeah. just like, no, you remember. You know, you don't yeah, know how yeah. much. <laughs> you, stop you, remember. On me. <laughs> you remember, bitch. <laughs> and that's what the producer said. And that's his exactly the- <laughs> Where's my fucking money? <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly oh, how no, I can't remember. <laughs> 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 no, yeah, the fact that it it doubled too. I, I I can't divorce the idea that COVID and all that had something to do with it because uh, alcoholism like rose like so high once we got into the pandemic and we were home and everything with George Floyd and impacted Black people so much. So yeah, so I I can only imagine. And you know, I think my conspiracy theory too got heightened when I saw Cat Williams his this second to last special. I think is he's a. Uh, Okay, like let's in a presidential, <laughs> he's oh. like in a he's like in a presidential thing, and he was having conspiracy theories about black people dying from fentanyl, and he was just like, 
black people, he was like, you know how you die from fentanyl? You touch it. <laughs> he was like, black yeah, people are yeah. not. If you tell us that, we're not doing it. He was like, nigga, that's how you die? You just touch it? Like, we're not going to do it. So when he said that, too, and I do think that Cat Williams is a very smart person, I think all of you who do stand-up, I think we can't divorce the idea that you guys are inherently very, very, very fucking smart. So mm. I do think that he is... <laughs> Go <right>. on. <laughs> no, seriously. I think... I- I've heard some jokes that I was just like, oh, wow, this is like, he's like a philosopher. Like, I definitely so. Like, this and I love, and I love a good tit joke, you know, and I love a good. I pre- yeah, I appreciate this. This is dangerous it's territory. Very sweet, but I think you're making a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I, I, I think you're wrong. I don't think that uh, calling well, okay, us philosophers listen. is the right instinct. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I didn't say, I was speaking about word. one specific comic. And, and, okay. Okay, so I think, listen, just like any art form, all stand-ups are not created equal, okay? Mm. I think some of you all are super-duper brilliant and amazing and wonderful and very smart to be able to do what you do and have that POV. And I think it takes a certain pedigree and talent to stand up there with just a fucking mic and it's just you and there's no additional resources. That's it. And then there are some of you all, you know, not so great. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, that could no, be said about... Talent. Or yeah. an extreme level of desperation. Yeah. yeah. So it's really I, I, like, that, that could be said about actors and oh, writers yeah. and directors entertainers, and entertainers. rappers. Like, yeah. Entertainers in general. I yeah, I think I think this is a deep, deep sickness and and not as much of a <laughs> skill as we want it to be. I think Well there is, okay, well there's some of you all that do have a, a, a skill that I really I I I look at you all and I'm like, oh, I could never do that. And I don't want to ever do that. That's that's their thing and they do it so well. So I think, yeah, I think I think I Honestly, think there's good and bad in each art form, but you got if, come on, David, come had, on. You guys are it, really you, you think, guys are you smart. Be doing this? <laughs> David, and you guys are such pessimists. You guys are such pessimists. <laughs> Natasha Leggero told me that. She was like, why don't you want to do stand-up? You can make so much fucking money, X. You need to do this, this, and that. I was like, but I love community. And this, she was like, and that's why you're not a stand-up. Yeah. You're you never seem to be a happy person. You're <laughs> that's already exactly out. What she said. Already yeah, out of here. Don't be blessed. You're <laughs> out of here. This is, God, come you here. don't want no parts of this shit. I know. I'm such a community person. I said, I would do stand-up. This stand here up. is boy. <laughs> <laughs> and boy will leave your ass feeling null and void. <laughs> <laughs> but there's some of you all that, like, I think you guys are great. I think... I, I, I think that there, I think a lot of stand-ups are misunderstood. Once I get to know you all, I'm like, oh my God, you soft as baby powder. You mm-hmm. sweet yeah. boy. That's true. You know? that's, and that's then there's true there's Langston on stage and then there's Langston at home. Then there's Langston at the Both cool at guys. The, both cool <laughs> guys, you know? There's David, you know, in Denver. Then there's David with the Mexicans, you know? Both. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't be <laughs> Just summer school, ESL, only summer schools when we're doing it. Oh, yeah. When they're serving me a taco, baby. Shout out to Los Carboncitos, best taco <laughs> in the city. <laughs> oh, my God. I forgot what we were talking about. Oh, yeah, I was big enough stand-ups, and you guys were like, don't do that. Yeah. We're, we're terrible. Yeah. But I don't believe that. I think some, I love I love Jabuki. I love Sydney. I love Marie. Langston, I've enjoyed you as That's well. They don't people. Heard- <laughs> Wait, I don't want to listen to I also all. enjoy. Yeah. 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 Fine yeah. folks. No, I like... Fine folks no. on both sides. I like... <laughs> okay, I'm going to say, you guys are such stand-ups, so mean and a pessimist. <laughs> Uh, this is, I'm, we, such, I'm such an improviser. I'm like, no, it's great. Praise. It's community. No, no but I, I realized Impro- that too. Improvisers have friends, though. That's the other thing. A yeah. lot of friends. I remember yeah. going to improv shows, like opening for stand up and being like, God damn, how do you know all these people? Yeah, yeah. So, y'all I burned my bridges years ago. Together? <laughs> <laughs> we do. It was interesting playing uh, My Mail with Rob Hayes while we were writing for the BET Awards because he was like, Man, I don't play that game. And so then it was like, Okay, uh, it was it was too much going on. And he was like, Okay, X, not now. And I was like, Okay, cool. And he was like, Okay, let's play it. So he was down to play, but you know, My Mail is when if me, David, and Langston are playing, we're all going to say three, two, one. We're all going to say one word at the same time. And the goal is to always mail the word and get to the mm. same word to make sure we're all on the same page. Absolutely and I used to not. do it. Yeah. <laughs> You're great. 
Absolutely not. Rob I don't want did anybody it. in here. <laughs> 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 and Rob, I did it with Jay Snow, who's another stand-up, dope-ass writer, Jay Snow. And it was interesting because every time we say a word, they're like, X, they kept second-guessing the word. I said, every word you say is correct. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go to you. Like, whatever you say is perfect. And so when it was done, it's already, Rob was... It's already <laughs> not I get down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And when it was... And we did it. We did it twice. And it was it was so exhilarating to get to the word and that we're all on the same page. And Rob was like, yeah, you know the mother word. I could have, yeah. When you had said that word, I could have. See, I knew I was supposed to say. I said, hey, that's not what it's about. Every word you say is perfect. And the other guy, Evan, who's not an improviser, he was like, nah, I don't know. Because Rob got... <laughs> Wait, no, that's yeah. not shout out, shout out to Rob for really representing the culture. <laughs> yeah. Rob is a consummate stand up comedian. Stand up, stand up inside for, and out. Yo, yeah. for real. For, if he there's is. So, he's a lifer. No, but yeah. <laughs> Rob do an improv for Kev on stage's thing. So I think Rob is mm. such a sweet boy. I love Rob. I'm dying to put him in something that I write. I, he's such a uh, great in the room, great energy. And yeah. he loves coming from Daily Show. I feel like I was at Daily Show for three years. So I feel like I'm an improviser, but I have stand up energy. Mm. Right. Like I mm. love bits. I love hard jokes. Like I used to not be able to make jokes about certain things. And then my boss did a Jedi mind trick. There was like some. Some some sex trafficking something that they needed bits on. I was like, I said, hey, I can't make jokes. This is this is this is terrible. This is a sad thing, and this is so sad. I can't. Who can make jokes on this? So he literally could have fired me because I literally just told him I can't do my job. Yeah, like yeah. I can't. I but I'm such. I'm an actor and I'm an improviser and I feel and I'm like this is a this is a woman and this was what happened and he looked me in my eye and he said X. There's always a joke, and from that day. I could see a three-year-old get ran over and I have two sketches. Like, I just, yeah. I just, he has fucked my brain. And as soon as I started telling other writers at The Daily Show that I'm like, oh, yeah, my, I, I'm thinking so fucked up. Like, I, I, I'm writing these jokes and I can write jokes about this. Like, I have two rape jokes, top of the morning, 10 a.m. And they're like, yeah, X, now you're doing the job right. <laughs> just, Someone get this jigaboo <laughs> away from me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That was purely in service of the bit. It was the funniest no, I, thing I, I could have pressed in that I moment. It. Yeah. <laughs> I do I do think that that is true. And I do think that oftentimes the interpretation of there not being a joke is because people are thinking about the victim and, and maybe rightfully so on a human level, that is who we should be thinking about. But if we're talking about on a comedic level, there's so many different participants inside of every choice that could be made fun of or made light yeah. of or, or used for levity, whatever. So, like, yeah, there's always a fucking joke. And, yeah. And even that run over a kid might might be a real funny run over a kid. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, but the thing really is, know. I learned from... Because I was so obsessed with jokes and how to just write jokes when I got to The Daily Show that I studied all the Trevor specials. I went back to Jamie Foxx. I might need security. And so, okay. like, I'm a very... His best one. Very, yeah. And so, I... <laughs> and I used to watch that religiously. I had the DVD in college. Like, I fucking love that. So, I, like, did a Google sheet and broke it down. Like, what's the punch? What's the setup punch? How to do that? And then yeah. I recognize with people that are masters that do that, if you're going to do a joke that's blue, it has to be funnier than it is true or funnier than it is mean, right? Like, it has to just... Mm. If I'm going to do an AIDS joke, it better be the best goddamn AIDS joke. Like, you don't just throw around AIDS jokes like that. You know, like, it needs to be I don't know. I think in. you should talk to alt-white comics from the <laughs> 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 Kind of their go-to punchline. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, what is it, the AIDS? Yeah. They just said, it was just, like, <laughs> blah, 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 with AIDS! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely all right <laughs> absolutely yeah no but i i th there are stand-ups of uh that i truly love you guys are great thank you thank and you. that being said stand-up is great langston and i probably the two best people to ever do it uh, I, i'd agree with that yeah, <laughs> yeah that sounds yeah. right to me watch our specials they're very good <laughs> <laughs> as far as on terms of this conspiracy theory i feel like we're all on the same page that it's it's real i think right Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I think even if it's not that the government is actively putting the shit in the shit, right? I think what feels objective is that the introduction of this opiate 
this this street drug ultimately means the the spread of this street drug and they knew that from the beginning that like by spreading it they are gaining from it in some form or fashion or at least can spin it to gain from it uh in in profits down the line yeah you no i'm it. with that and i feel like if more white people were dying from it or if they were if if they were leading as far as people who have died from fentanyl it'll be cut off at the head like why isn't that like i think it's this is America. Like, why can't we put systems in place to stop fentanyl from coming in over here? It's just too much. And I will say, I do think a lot of white people are dying from it. But I think now what they figured out is how to then make that direct profit rather than this long game that they had to play with, like crack and fucking heroin and shit. Right, because it's the, the classism of it all. What type of white people are dying? Like, yeah, yeah are they exactly. like exactly in Middle America? Hicks, you know, underrepresented, poor whites. Yeah. True. Yeah. Hell yeah. I think we did it. But X, this was great. Could you tell the people where they can find you and what cool shit you have going on? Yes, 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 yes. So you can follow me on Instagram at eight zero dollars in a suitcase. That's eighty dollars in a suitcase. I have my show, uh Ragged Ed Show on Instagram, who made the potato salad show. They're all three handles on Instagram. Yeah, I have my own podcast called The Dough on Lemonada, where we talk all things money. I love money. I love talking about it. I love the emotional attachment to it and like why we don't talk about it enough. I think being transparent, especially as black people, like I will tell you exactly how much they paid me and tell you to ask for more. You know, like that's, I think that's cool. No, we have to. What? Yeah. yeah, we have to. So I like, yeah. Oh, look at your bus down in the back. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So follow the dough on Lemonada wherever you get your pods. And yeah, there's some cool stuff that I legally can't talk about, but just stay tuned at the end of this year and, and see. Fuck yeah. Yeah. All right. Stay tuned. You got a little, uh, little uh, to be continued right at the end, <laughs> like a like a 90s music video. I like that. <laughs> oh, I thought you said you got a little to be. I was about to say. No, no, no. <laughs> <Fuck that>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, David, he's back. He's back and he's, he's speaking Spanish again. <laughs> David is David is that song when they say I said hola como esta she said konnichiwa that's that's David shit 100%, that's it. 100%. I also love Asians oh, oh, okay Langston in the episode in it. Cut it. Uh, no, now we're getting started this, this is where I say yes sir yes uh, yes Oh, yes. Please rewatch The Blackening if you haven't seen it. Horror comedy uh, written and produced and starring my baby, Dwayne Perkins. So, yeah. Watch Please Don't Destroy on Peacock. Run up the numbers. Yeah. And there's going to be other opportunities to support my community endeavors because I'm deeply invested in bringing up the next generation of creatives of color. So there'll be opportunities to support that coming soon. Hell yeah. This yeah. Is, let's go support X on all that shit. And uh and we ain't bringing up the community, David. Who, who, why are you? What you selling for yourself now, brother? You can watch me on Exploding Kittens on Netflix. Only about four of the nine episodes. You don't have to watch them all; just the ones that have. Uh, you can listen to my stand-up comedy special, patreoncom backslash David Bory, where I will be releasing it solo, August first, payday for all of you who are broke. Sign up for the free Patreon. There's over 30 pieces of content on there already. We got behind-the-scenes shit. We got interviews. We got an interview from Langston coming up. It's hilarious. Uh, sign up for that for free. Uh, you know, and then, like, shout out to Denver. <laughs> <laughs> shout, out, shout, out to, shout out to everybody at the African-American Arts Festival. It was so hot. Whoa. Fun? I went on access. So here's what happened. I was riding my bike. I was like, I ended up in the parade. And then I was like, oh, I didn't even know. So I walked through, but I had my bike. So I was all kind of sweaty. And then I told uh, everybody, I was like, let's all go back on Sunday. And then we ended up not going back on Sunday. But I went on Saturday, had a great time by myself. Almost got me with those African hats. Almost bought one, didn't have enough cash. Mm, mm. Would you Would you have worn it Yeah. genuinely? Yeah. Like yeah. it, it would become a new, almost yeah. like daily hat for you. Not daily. I don't know why you do that to me all the time. 
Uh, <laughs> I, I just meant, I meant stylistically. I didn't mean. It. it would be one of your little daily hats. <laughs> I didn't mean you. Is that what you want to wear, David? You want to put on your little daily you hat? You want to put your little African hat on and eat, yeah. eat your rice? <laughs> I didn't mean you'd wake up in Kofi. I just meant that, like, you would, you know, wear it frequently. I want a big hat for events. Okay. I got baseball hats, but like when you go to like a food festival or what, especially lately, it's been so hot, bro. We were at Jazz in the Park the other day, and I was like sweating. I was like, "This is not." I need a bigger one for outside, so I've been wow. looking for that for sure. Okay, fair enough. Well, as always, you can follow me at Langston Kerman <laughs> on all social media platform, uh, and and uh, watch my special August twentieth. On Netflix, it's called Bad Poetry. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a time, y'all. Y'all go ahead and tune in on that. And if you want to send us your own drops, your own conspiracy theories, if you want to explain to us where the fentanyl should be hidden, maybe we put okay. in our chicken. And maybe no. we put it in our broccoli. You tell <laughs> me where you, you put think. it in <laughs> X's uterus pocket. <laughs> <laughs> and a little maybe there. Case. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little locket on it. Oh, yeah. Send it all to mymamapod at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. Uh, buy the merch. Follow, like, subscribe, rate, review. You know what to do. What, what do you? I got to explain everything to you. Shut up. Bye, bitch. Pop my butt. Pop, pop my butt. Pop my butt. Pop, pop my butt. Do you know what pop my butt meant to Harriet Tubman? <laughs> do you know what that meant? It meant a whip. My Mama Told Me is a production of Will Ferrell's Big Money Players Network and iHeart Podcast. Created and hosted by Langston Kern. Co-hosted by David Borey. Executive produced by Will Ferrell, Hans Sani, and Olivia Aguilar. Co-produced by Bay Wang. Edited and engineered by Justin Connor. Music by Nick Chambers. Artwork by Dogon Krieger. You can now watch episodes of My Mama Told Me on YouTube. Follow at My Mama Told Me and subscribe to our channel.